and down a very steep precipice, cliff, whatever, and fell into the sea and died. And there were about 2,000 of them as far as we know. It doesn't say in this particular account. But it's a lot, and put it this way, it was a large herd. You know, I find things rather interesting when you look at Look behind the scenes and things that are done in our day. Does anybody remember hearing about a movie called The Exorcist? Yes. William Peter Blady? William Peter Blady was a producer of The Exorcist. But he had never produced a movie before. His real job was, he worked for the Central Intelligence Agency, or the U.S. government. And then produced this movie. Apparently the government is in the movie business sometimes. And you know, people would go to the theater and they would watch this movie about a priest, Catholic priest, trying to cast the devils out of this little child. There would be all kinds of awful manifestations going on. Freaky, scary, weird stuff. But what's most discomforting is the soundtrack. The music that accompanied the events all these creepy events. And I tracked that down. And I found out that to produce that soundtrack, they had to use people, you know, making these noises, com combined with the slaughtering of pigs. They actually literally had pigs, they cut their throats and listened to them squeal and holler and, and they mixed that with the voices, they remixed it. And I couldn't help but think, here you had a reversal going on. Jesus cast the devils out and they went into the swine. Now you got people sitting in movie theaters and through this process of the soundtrack, the devils were coming out of the screen and going right into the people. And they said people ran out into the streets from the theater, vomiting, throwing themselves on the ground, sick. You see, it was a CIA experiment. Quite an amazing one, too. Oh, they've done that sort of thing many times. Just after World War II, in a little city in Switzerland, there was a Swiss scientist who came out with a drug called lysergic acid diethylamide. It came to be known as LSD. He produced it for the U.S. government on an experimental basis of mind control. Suddenly in this little city, people started getting sick, hallucinating, having severe problems, seeing things, and it was just a, a bad situation. A number of them died. And it got tracked all the way back to how they had laced French bread with LSD in a bakery and through their experimentation had killed people, had destroyed lives, families, but they didn't care. They wanted to see how it would work before they brought it to the United States in the 1960s. And Dr. Timothy Leary popularized it. Turn on, tune in, drop out. Remember? Everything got psychedelic. Peter Max Art.
People walked around in tie-dyed shirts. Hippies. Using LSD. In small measured doses. And then Dr. Leary said, made a statement one time, he said, you see, they're not hallucinating. They're seeing another world that does exist. All the drug does is allow them to see it. It facilitates their minds to look at the other side and see these grotesque things. Talked to one boy, he said that uh, he'd used it one time and he thought that there were giant purple crabs throwing lightning bolts at him. He's convinced, you know? And reacted accordingly, running down the street screaming. There are all kinds of examples of this. That was all our U.S. government. This hippie generation was a product of the U.S. government. If you listen to the music of the 60s and all the drugs and everything going on in there, that's what it's all about. When uh, Don McLean wrote that song, American Pie, it's over seven minutes long. In the middle of the song, he, he explained it all. He said, and there we are, there we were, all in one place, a generation lost in space with no time to return again. So Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack Flash sat on a candlestick. His fire is the devil's only friend. And as the flames climbed high into the night to light